ओम तत्पुरुषाय विमह वक्रतुंडय धीमह तन्नो दंदि प्रचोदया ओं साईश्वराय विमह सत्यदेवाय धीमह तर्व प्रचोदया ओं जयंती मंगल काली भद्र काली कपालिनी दुर्गा श्यामा शिवदात्रे स्वाहा स्वादा नमोस्त दे ओं शांति 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 हे सैरम लीन सैरम फ्रॉम लीज Sayam Sharma, Sayam from New Zealand, and welcome to our sweet listeners. We so much appreciate your comments. Please keep them coming. It helps Sharma and I improve our broadcasts, and we are very appreciative of anything that you have to say. Swami, thank you for allowing us to share yet another beautiful recollection of the early days that we had in Prashanti Nilayam. The years were 1989 to about 1994, which is which was the beginning of our trips, and I'm calling my topic Swami's Flower Ladies, because. Uh, back in those days, particularly 1989, 1990, 1991, you could wear the most amazing outfits into the Darshan area. Now there were certain ladies whose outfits, and they were nearly always older ladies, like in their 60s, maybe 70s. They were European ladies. They were from Australia, some of them. And they had obviously designed and made their own darshan outfits, and I'm telling you, these ladies had designed dresses that looked like gigantic flowers. I can remember seeing a group of these ladies. They were in pink and rose color, white, pale blue, always pastel colors. Because you know, Swami's colors in the ashram are pastel pink. The buildings are painted pastel pink, uh, pastel blue, a cream color, and a very pale yellow, and of course, white. These are the colors that you see in all around you when you're in Prasanti Nilayam, and these ladies had obviously designed dresses. Uh, they were very modest dresses with you know high collars, and um, they would they were short sleeves, but they would wear a shawl, and the skirts were made like the petals of flowers. So we had these older ladies coming to Darshan, and they just looked so beautiful. They were all beautiful. Beautifully made up, their hair was waved and curled, and they looked absolutely beautiful, like they had stepped right off the stage of some kind of theatre production with these cascading petal skirts. And when they whirled around, all these beautiful petals spun out, and I was absolutely beside myself. I had never seen anything like this. This was the last thing I was expecting, because we had been told to, um, if we were ladies, we could wear either a sari or get a salwar kameez or Punjabi suits or just wear, you know, um, something very modest. Obviously, you had to cover your shoulders. You had to be covered from really top to toe and um, because that was how Swami liked it. There was another lady there who was dressed entirely in outfits of cloth that looked like leopard skin. And she had jewelry that looked like cats with you know big cat's heads and bracelets and she had lots of photographs of her cats and everyone called her the cat lady and Swami regularly called this lady in with an Australian group for interviews and always blessed the photos of her cats. I began to wonder about this place called Prashanti Nilayam and there was another lady who dressed up exactly like an Egyptian queen. She was from the United States. I got to know her because for some reason she was often seated at the front and I was getting quite a few front row seats too, don't know why, but I often ended up sitting next to this lady who looked 
just like Cleopatra. I'm not kidding you. She was done up to the nines, and Swami loved her. He always stopped and talked to her. And even her hair was coiffured, just like an Indian, uh, sorry, an Egyptian hairstyle. I mean, she could have been literally straight off of a movie set. And I do believe that she had come from Hollywood. However, I got to know her, and she was the most adorable, charming, lovely person you could imagine. And she told me she got up every morning at three o'clock in the morning because it took her hours to put on her makeup to look like Cleopatra. Now, another pair was the pink twins, the famous pink twins from Australia, and they were elderly. They were twins, identical twins, and they dressed in always pink outfits that they had custom made. And I'll never forget one outfit that they were wearing <clears throat> and I must say Swami loved these two I've mentioned them in other talks they had made pink satin engineers caps and overalls uh, with little shawls and they had pink umbrellas, pink walking sticks. They wore pink lipstick and pink rouge. But these engineers' outfits were something else, all in pink satin. And Swami just loved these two. He called them in for interviews all the time. He made them matching diamond rings. He absolutely showered them with love. They simply loved Swami. And they were always making collages of cutouts of valentines, birds, flowers, old-fashioned kinds of prints, and they would make posters and cards, postcards, for example, um, that had one of Swami's quotations, and then they would surround it with glue and glitter and all these little cutouts. And they even made calendars, presented everything to Swami. Swami blessed everything. And for many years, the ashram shop carried copies of their little books that they made. And indeed, these lovely ladies who had founded a, a um, home for handicapped people in um, Brisbane, it was called Swara, the Sunshine Welfare and Relief Association. They did so much service for the handicapped people in Australia, and Swami knew it, and that's, he just knew that these two were pure love. Now, once I was sitting in a group of these amazing ladies, and in came some tribal women. I don't know what part of India they had come from. These women were six feet tall with shaved heads. They had big, huge uh, silver bangles around their ankles and all the way up their arms. They carried long walking sticks, which were even they were allowed to bring those into the darshan area. And they wore their saris in such a way that they did not wear a chali or a blouse underneath them. I think you know the style I am speaking of. And around their necks, they had big silver necklaces. And I went, whoa, I've never seen women who look like that. I was absolutely, my mouth was hanging open. They looked very fierce, like you didn't mess with them. But you know what? They knelt down. They were as good as gold in the darshan line. And I watched Swami bless them. And you could see they were just pouring out their love to Swami. I learned so much in those early days in the ashram. I learned even though later all of these dress, the dress codes changed quite a lot as the years went by and these these really over-the-top outfits were not permitted if someone showed up, except for the pink twins. They were the only ones. They were so well-known by then by the Sabadol ladies that they were always ushered in and given a front-row seat or a chair, because in later life they were both of them um, having problems walking, and they became very, very good friends with Mata Betty, and in fact Mata Betty called them the pink girls, 
And um, although Mata didn't wear pink outfits, she always wore beautiful white outfits of satin that was embossed with roses. She loved roses. Um, and her outfits were specially designed by one member of our group. And Swami loved these outfits that Mata had quite often in the interview room. As soon as she sat down next to him, he would begin arranging her shawl or arranging her dupatta and commenting on what a beautiful outfit that she was wearing. And so Swami noticed, that's one thing I noticed, when the effort was put in with love, he would always acknowledge that love, whether it was in the way you dressed for him, whether it was in the way you behaved. Mata Betty's rules, I can say, were very, very strict. Um, and she said these were Swami's rules, not hers. And these were the rules that we as group members were expected to um, always adhere to when we traveled as a group. We always had to dress in white very simply and very plainly or else in, in either a sari or in a Punjabi suit <clears throat> with our special, the special scarf that Mata had chosen which always had a pattern of pink roses on a white foreground or white roses on a uh, white or sorry, um, pink roses on a white foreground or white roses on a pink foreground. <laughs> she is very particular about everything. I hope the ladies especially have enjoyed this talk. I have always remembered with great, great fondness the beautiful outfits made with love and displayed with love for Swami in those early days in the ashram. Om Sri Sai Ram. Om Shri Sai Ram Om Tasmat Karunya Bhavena Raksha Raksha Sai Ishwara Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Sai Ishwara Arpanamastu Om Shanti Shanti Shanti